Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you are in the world. This is season two of Zeb Tribe broadcast, where we talk to filmmakers across Africa, Africa in diaspora, and all those interested in film in Africa. And we, on this season two, we are starting with a bang. How much stronger could this season be, the beginning of this season, than bringing in the International Emmys, Emmy Awards, considering this is a season for submission? Have you submitted? Are you a member? Do you, do you think that maybe Africa doesn't have a place? Have you always had so many questions and thinking, these people are so far away in New York, I can never get to talk to them? Mm -hmm. I brought them right here. Zeb Tribe TV has brought them for you right here. You are talking to them. You're hearing from the horse's mouth. Ignorance is no defense. They are right here. Make sure your friends log on and let's talk. Now, as we wait, I want to wait a little bit as people log in, but the only way I will know you've logged in is send a, uh, send a comment on Facebook. It could be, hello. It could be the name of the country you are logging from. Who's the first one to go? Let's hear from you. Let's hear you, the members, the audience who are out there listening to us. And while we wait for you to let us know you are right there, let's start with quick introductions. Our topic today, the International Emmy Awards. The International Emmy in terms of how do we submit our film contents for awards consideration? And are there many African members in the Academy? And how, to, how can we become members? So let me ask my panel to introduce themselves and I'll start with Nathaniel. Nathaniel, yes. tell us who you are, yes. Hi, Njoki. Thank you so much for uh, for having me, having us represent the Academy today. So it's a great opportunity for us to talk about the Academy and the competition uh, in, in Africa. Um, and uh, I'm the senior director of Emmy Judging for the International Academy. That means that I basically take care of all the entries and submissions and judging for the competition. Okay, excellent. So he's the one in charge of the judging. He knows a lot about what goes in there. We are going to ask him some tough questions. Welcome, South Africa, Kenya, Nilesh Singh. Um, Damaris, you are always there from Kenya. Thank you so much. Keep coming, keep making your comments. The next person, Miguel Parish. Who are, tell us who you are and uh, what part of the country and what you represent. Okay, my, my name my name is Michael Parrish. Um, I am from Nigeria. I live in Lagos, Nigeria. I'm a filmmaker. I also uh, manage um, a community called the Pan-African Film Consortium, which is um, a community of um, African cinema stakeholders and enthusiasts. Um, it's always an um, exciting moment, engaging conversation that has to promote uh, the film industry, and um, I want to say thank you to all my other participants, um, Wangeshi, Natalia, and um, Matt, for being a part of this very important conversation. Okay, thank you so much. Later on, Michael, I'm going to ask you about your title, Ambassador. I noticed you also <laughs> called Ambassador Parish. I'll come back to that. Yes, young yes. Matt Nathan, uh, Matt, Matt Young, please tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. Hello, everybody. My name is Matt Young, and I uh, run the membership department at the International Academy of Television Arts and Sciences. Um, and I also wear another hat, which is uh, running the social media for our organization as well. So I'm really looking forward to uh, having the opportunity to be here with all of you today. Thanks to Najoki for, um, like you said, bringing us to you so that we could um, Kind of just address some questions that there might be and um you know hopefully encourage you all to be a part of the organization one way or another okay thank you so much matt and as it goes with african tradition you first deal with the guests then you go to your fellow countrymen or woman or village mate or family that's why one guess she comes last 
not because she has least to contribute, but because she's from Kenya. So she has to come last. When gets she? Tell us who you are and why you're in this discussion. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Joki, for that introduction. I thought you were saving the best for last, um, you know. But um, I think M Mikhail and everyone really has taken um, everything, the words out of my mouth. But um, I am a content distributor. I am the director of at Media Proof Africa, that, uh, which is basically a media resource center. So we work very closely with media stakeholders, both local and international, independent producers, broadcast networks, other distributors as well. So we are very familiar with the international Emmys, with Nathaniel and Matt um, that um, we've been um, talking over some time, and Mikhail as well, and of course you, Joki. So I already feel at home, and I'm really excited to be part of this um, conversation, which is going to be quite exciting. So thank you. Thank you so much, Wungeshi. And Media Pros Africa, you do a lot of content distribution, which means a lot of content goes through your hands. So yeah. you know a lot about Africa, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Would I be right in saying that, Wangeshi? No, you're absolutely correct. I mean, um, distribution, really, that's what it's about. It's about content, receiving content, reviewing that content, finding suitable platforms for that content. And um, um, with every platform, there are different rules, there are different regulations, there are different set standards. So um, we basically, you would say, we are what the middleman in terms of getting this content from um, point A to point B, that is from the creator to basically the platform. So just during that time, we review a lot of content from all parts of the world, not only Africa. And what we have seen, yes, um, a majority of it is really good, especially from Africa, I, can't, I must say, um, as in the recent past, but also, the, we also do receive international content um, from producers who are looking for placement in Africa. So it goes both ways. Africa wanting to go out into the international platforms and the international content wanting to come into Africa. So we are in a very good strategic position um, when it comes to that and we enjoy what we do. Excellent. I'll go back briefly to Michael for the benefit of our audience. Michael, I know one thing for sure. If I'm looking for a producer in a country in Africa where I've never been, and I know zilch about the country, if I just go to Michael, I need a producer or a runner or a location person in a certain country, you would know because you deal with the entire continent. Am I right in saying so, exactly. Michael? Exactly. Exactly. So do you need a producer now? Uh, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> After this, there'll be a lot of requests. Yeah. So now... Let me go. Let me uh, also acknowledge Eva Luna Obadea, who has also logged on. She's the communications director of the International Emmys of the Tele. I should say the right title. The right title is what, Nathaniel? Please first explain to us when we say the Emmys, the International Emmys, the Academy of Science and Arts. It's too confusing. So, so it out for us. But welcome, Eva. Welcome, Eva. But Nathaniel, first tell us what is the right title and term? Yeah. The the uh, the complete title is the International Academy of Television Arts and Sciences. What's important to know is that the Emmy is the Emmy. So that that should be that that should be good enough. It's uh, you're competing when you're competing, whether you're submitting your program uh, to the Primetime Academy or the International Emmys, you compete for an Emmy. The 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 difference is the jurisdiction. So the Emmy is the trophy. Yes. Physical. The Emmy the is physical organization, The organization is the International Academy of Television Arts and Sciences. Television Arts and Sciences. What's so science about this? <laughs> it's it's about the arts and sciences of television. Mm -hmm. you know, because the, the academy uh, also uh, recognizes, you know, the, the work of everyone in the, in the background who are just uh, working their magic to make it happen. Okay. Let me speak a little bit, and I think my colleagues here from Africa will also have input on this. Michael, when we talk of an academy in Africa, what comes into mind? Well, um, I don't know. For us, it's, it's more of um, um, a platform where... Uh, people are trained uh, more like um, <laughs> the school. Yes. So when you talk about the academy, we're looking yes. at um, a training school for for some sort of uh, skill 
um, mm. or the other. So it's, it's, it's kind of confusing. But of course, we have the African uh, Academy uh, Movie Awards, so we understand. Okay, okay. Well, yes, you do have, want to have some input on the use of the word academy. No, I think Mikel is quite right because um, the way we know academy to be in Africa is um, it's a school. You know, it's an institution where you go to learn, you know, to better your skills and all that. But um, I think there's, we are, we are exposed now, especially with the digital, you know, with technology and all that, that we, we are beginning to understand, you know, even the terms that are used by the international platforms that Academy could also represent just a body or an institution that caters towards other, um, you know, skills and expertise, yeah. not necessarily a training institution. So I think we are really beginning to understand that. And um, yeah. so I think the clarity is a little bit better. Okay. So Africa, you who are listening and watching us, please know we, the, the term academy here, we're not talking of where to go get training because we tend to use that a lot uh, referring to school, but here the academy is the institution of their awards. I know many of you know that, but just in case of somebody was confused, like I used to be. So yeah, now you know. So now let me get into the real questions. Now that we know it's an academy of science and arts, because making films involves science and art, and the trophy you get is the Emmy, uh, maybe I should ask Matt. What, we hear of the Emmys, then we hear of the international Emmys. We hear of one that is for, um, I think, America and the rest of the world. Please unpack that for us. Are they two different institutions or one with two departments? Sure, and um, what, like Nathaniel said about jurisdiction, it really comes down to that. So here in um, the US, we have the Television Academy and we have the National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences. And then there's us who are also based in our New York office, the International Academy. Um, mm -hmm. We are all sister organizations and we all share the Emmy Award um, when we mm -hmm. present um, that award to excellence in television. So like Nathaniel said, um, you know, it's the same award, it's the same Emmy trophy, um, but given, you know, the three different um, audiences of people. So us, we have the international market. So everybody outside of the US, um, Nathaniel could mention it a little bit later, but we do have a category for um, programs that are produced in the US that are, you know, in a foreign language, 50% uh, or more, I believe in a foreign language. Um, and then the Television Academy and the National Academy, they really focus on U.S. Um, television. Thank you, Matt. But you're going to take us slowly because even Damaris is asking, so are the international Emmys open for all, but Emmys are on U.S. based? So let's go through this again. Yeah, uh, I, I can actually yes. answer if you don't uh, Yes, go on, so the, um, Of course, the, the, the Emmy is a U.S. award, right? Uh, however, the International Academy's mandate is to recognize excellence in television programming from outside the United States. So all the programs that are entered into the international competition for an Emmy with us come from outside the US. However, the Emmy itself, the Emmy Award, is a US recognition. Aha, uh -huh. this is great knowledge for us. But now, when you say outside of the U.S., does that mean me, the small producer in a little city called Nairobi, I'm compared with somebody from Netherlands, Germany, Korea, Japan? I'm compared with these giants. Is that is that what it means? First, Nairobi is a beautiful city. It's not. <laughs> <good. laughs> and and you'd like to know that Kenya actually won twice an Emmy Award. Uh, you know, back in uh, 2012 and 2014 for a program called True Jazz. Um, so yes, absolutely, absolutely. You know, and, uh, any program coming from Africa have, can can win. You know. Okay. So, when guess you do want to ask some questions or make comments um, based on the content, the quality of the content that you see, and what are the chances that it can win? Everybody has um, a chance to win. Hmm. 
<laughs> Sorry, Nathaniel, what did you say? Just saying before you even answer, I think everybody has a chance to win. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, yes, I, I agree. Everybody has a chance. Um, and Jockey, I think maybe just to add on to your point with regards to Africa um, being categorized or grouped together with countries from other, from the international Asia and everywhere, other parts of the world. From the content that I have seen, and you're asking as a distributor, I think we definitely do have a chance and stand a chance to win as Nathaniel says, because the quality of productions that have been coming through that I have been receiving, especially over the last year or so are brilliant. And I have even expressed this, um, shared this um, with Mikhail, who, who definitely informs us on what is happening, what is new in town, what has been released. And when you just watch even just the trailer, forget even watching the full film itself, the trailer is already exciting enough for you to watch. Of course, if you're buying the content, you have to watch the full screener, but if you can already just engage me in a trailer alone, it means you've already picked my interest as to what it is that your content has. So do we stand a chance to win? Absolutely. However, is there room for improvement, not only in terms of quality, but also in terms of how we market ourselves and expose ourselves as content creators to the rest of the world. I think this is a one shortcoming that we have because I have also been receiving a lot of requests and people asking, how do I go about getting my content onto the MS? How do I submit? What are the rules and regulations? And um, so as Media Police Africa, we are happy to facilitate that process to anybody who comes to our office or even does not knock on our office. We are always regularly posting you know, how to go about this, um, how to get your content into the MS, because we do believe that there is room for Africa to soar, to shine, because the content is really, really good that is coming out of Africa. And I think that the trajectory is that it's actually even going to keep getting better and better. And I'm hoping that this year, Nathaniel, Mr. Senior Judge, you will, <laughs> you will favor us, um, you know. <laughs> <laughs> kind of, because I think there's some good stuff that is definitely coming your way. Interesting enough, Wangeshi, somebody has actually written here, Wanjiro Mweru, question for Wangeshi Murage. As you review content and determine distribution channels, does that also determine which category they fall into, into for the Emmy? Before you put a response there, let me put a caveat on your behalf and also Michael's behalf. It's not that we are representing the Emmys. It's just because you are a distributor, people yes. come for advice from, from you. Am Correct. I right in saying yes. that? Yes. Yes, mm -hmm. yes yeah, you're absolutely. Sorry, Michael. I think it's very important to, to, to start by saying that um, nobody needs to review content before it's submitted. As long as your program was on television for the first time ever, in 2020, it's eligible for this year's uh, competition, and yes. you don't have to go through a third party to actually, you know, get reviewed or anything. Now, of course, uh, you know, you have like many people who really know their um, uh, their craft, and and you know, why not if you want to to hear their uh, uh, their advices and what they think, uh, it you you feel free to to do so. But um, you should really submit your program into the competition because that's the that's the path to you know to winning or to being nominated is to actually enter your program and the the programs are reviewed by jurors from around the world we never really know what's going to touch people from you know a different region a different country and that might be very very different from how the program is um you know reflects in your own country you know we, yeah. we had many yeah. examples of programs that were nominated that actually were not um, a hit locally, you know, and they were actually surprised. It's like, oh my God, we're nominated. Our show didn't really go well in our country, but we just tried because we, we love what we did and we did right, right? Because we were nominated. So you never yeah. really know how people from around the world are going to actually appreciate your program. And so you should not hesitate and you should really, really, you know, think strongly about what you're doing and what you love and, and submit your programs uh, into the competition. Just yeah, I love that. Yes. I love yeah, that. I okay, go ahead, Wangeshi. Go ahead. No, no, no. It's really just um, to add on to what Nathaniel is saying. Um, I think everybody should submit. Uh, it, if you're a content owner, there's a reason as to why you actually developed that, you know, that concept. It's because you believe in it, and I and I believe you've given it a hundred percent. 
So there's no reason as to why you should not submit your program. And as media pros, we just act as a facilitator. Like I said, we do not accept submissions on behalf of the MEs. That is done directly to the MEs. But we definitely can offer assistance. We can facilitate that process for you if you do not know how to go about it. But please, I would encourage everybody to submit directly. And um, it just takes 10 minutes, really. So what we are saying is that a producer sat down, got a script, went out and produced, and you went through thick and thin, you, you sweat blood and water. Why don't you have the courage to just go into to a link and upload your stuff for the Emmys? Surely, it's like running the marathon and stopping at the last quarter mile and deciding I'm tired. Anyway, Africa, come on, get on your content now there, stop having any excuses is what I say. Corinne Wamboy, you're saying just, just joining, I hope I haven't missed much. If you're joining now, if you know a friend who is unable to log on, within 48 hours, this recorded broadcast will be available on our YouTube channel. So no worries. So we've said, get out there and submit. Where do you submit? We have actually posted the link and we're going to do it again on, on Facebook right now. Joy, our, our, our great lady in the back office, Please uh, paste the, the, the link to the International Emmys right now. You have no excuse. You've done the hard work. This is just the last mile. You should do it. Michael, what are producers across Africa telling you about their content? Are we really? Nathaniel made a very important point. Our content might not gain the fame in our home village. But that doesn't mean it will not get fame internationally. You remember that uh, that um, African pro. I uh, think every country has, uh, every tribe has this saying about a prophet the king is, is not, not a prophet. Is not recognized in his own land. Sorry, a prophet is not, yes. a prophet is not recognized in his own land. That's uh, so the, 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 the thing I, I realize about a lot of producers in Africa is that they are lazy. So a lot of producers just don't want, they just want to make films and, and find someone to handle all the, the, all the problems associated with it. They want to find someone to look, do the distribution, the promotion, and even, even find awards they can, they, can, uh, they can enter your films for. They don't want to work. So when you start telling a producer that, you know what, you can enter your film for this festival and that festival, yeah, you know, a lot of them, when you send them the link, they, they don't have the energy to start going through the whole process. I don't know why, um, but I think that uh, we need to give more information and education uh, to producers on how they can get these things easy. Because a lot of producers also do not know that they can handle some of these applications themselves. So they want to spend time finding someone you know, like Wangeshi or calling me up and saying, how do we enter our films? And then you give them the link. They say, oh, this looks like a very difficult process. Uh, can't you just help us do it? We know we have to lobby. We know we have to do this and do that. Oh, they're not going to pick our films because they don't know us. I think they know people they already want to give their awards to. So <laughs> these are some of the conversations that people have. And, you know, and the, maybe the thing, maybe, maybe the fear of, Oh, this looks too big. Do you think I have a chance? I stand a chance of of even getting anywhere on this platform. You know, that's yes. why it's important that we're having this conversation. So people know that it's 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 for everybody. It's not uh, for a selected group of producers um, or producers who are and picked already to have this um, awards given or enter their films. So it's 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 a problem for for Africans. More African producers need to be educated uh, more on how to push the films after making the films. It's not about getting someone to help you fund your film, getting a, a director to help you shoot your film, uh, bringing together an entire crew, uh, finding a publicity uh, team to help you promote your film, and then looking for someone to help you enter your films into um, the Emmys or, or festivals or platforms that you might eventually uh, be lucky will take your film to places. So that's yeah. that's the conversation. We need to have more of this conversation um, and get more people to understand how these things work because I can tell you authoritatively, a lot of producers do not even know how it works with the Emmy. A lot of producers do not know. Just like 
um, the problems a lot of people have with entering their films uh, to the Oscar studio countries. A lot of African countries um, do not even have an Oscar committee, for example. They don't know how to go about it. So they keep asking Kenya or asking Nigeria or asking South Africa, how do you guys do this? The same way a lot of people do not even know what's the end, what kind of uh, uh, films or content they should send to the Emmys. They don't know. Some people, you, so we, we need to give more education, the kind of content the Emmys would receive, the process yes. of submitting uh, your content to the Emmys, and then the process of following up. If there, if there are ways to lobby, you know, to ensure visibility for your films, um, if there are other publicity measures you need to take for people, to more people to see your film, it's important, you know, so that we get more visibility at the Emmys. It's unfortunate that each time uh, we look at the selection for the Emmys, you almost don't find African uh, content on, on, on those platforms. And yeah. it's discouraging too. And, you know, I, I think in the next, um, um, uh, the next selection, we should do better, you know, yes. after this conversation. I so agree with you, Michael. And it's like you knew, you knew somebody has asked a question. I think it's Ogola from Kenya, whom I know is one of our leading actors, I believe. He says, question, submit just any program or, or it has to, be, to meet the criteria and quality checks? Nathaniel, I think you need to answer that. Yeah. yeah absolutely. And the, the answer is any program. As long as you have the rights, of course, to submit it, right? It cannot be submitted by the audience, for example. It needs to be submitted by the producers or the broadcasters uh, or, again, distributor, anyone who has the right to present the program and make sure that they that everybody involved know that they decide to submit the program. Um, just to make sure that the program is not entered twice or three times by, you know, by different people. Um, and, uh, and the criteria is just, you know, it has to follow, of course, our rules and regulation, but that is to make sure that the program aired for the first time ever in 2020, at least for this uh, current competition. So as long as the program was on television outside the United States for the first time ever in 2020, then it should be eligible. You know, in, uh, of course, there's um, many little uh, um, requirements depending on the category that you're submitting, but everything is, uh, is of course, detailed in our entry forms. Um, and at any point when you have any questions, just please, you know, feel free to, to reach out and, and, and ask. But everything is available on our website, and I, I saw that you, um, you provided the link, so thank you so much. And the website is imes.tv, TV as in television, um, I for international, and is with an S, dot TV. Uh, and you should have, like, all the, the answer there. But, yes, just, you know, just submit your programs, absolutely. Okay, thank you so much. So we have concluded that. The International Emmys is open for Africa like any other country outside of USA. That you do not need to be authorized by anybody or to be qualified. All you need to do is, like in any other competition in the world, there are rules. Go to their website, read the rules, and submit your programs. Easy does it. I think that's what we've agreed on. And like Michael has observed we there are rarely any african productions nominated i felt very proud the first time i attended the, the, the international emmy gala night in new york at least there was a south african production you should have seen me looking for them like why are you my brothers there are very few africans here you know and i mean we were looking for each other now if we flood the international emmys with our content Surely, by law of probability, we are going to be shortlisted. We are going to be nominated. So I think now we are, and by the way, you mentioned Shujaz, the one that won um, an, an Emmy some time back. Actually, the first person always to log in into a broadcast, Damaris was one of the writers. And she reminds us a lot about her Emmy, you know? <laughs> yeah. So it is possible we have a Kenyan Emmy winner in the audience. It is doable. So what are we waiting for? Again, I'm proudly African and I love African storytelling. And I'll remind you the same. He who does not want to jump, they give the excuse that the ground is rocky. 
That's why they are not jumping. So if you're not submitting, you're saying you don't want to jump and you're looking for excuses. Now I'm even done with this topic. Just get on and get, let's flood them. Let's give Nathaniel a nightmare. But I have one question. Why did I feel so lonely when I came to New York? When I was applying for membership more than six years ago, I thought, this is so difficult, I can't be a member. Then when I tried it again two years ago, it was so easy. But do we know that? Matt, I emailed you and I said, I don't even find Kenya in the drop-down menu. There's such few Africans, Matt. Why? Well, there's such few Africans who are members of the international Emmys. Sure. And, um, you know, let me just take a step back and just explain a little bit about membership to everybody here. Um, yes, we have the Emmy Awards and we recognize excellence um, for all the people who make television with the Emmy Awards statue. But the International Academy is also a membership uh, based organization. And um, that is comprised of media leaders, you know, from all around the world. We have over 600 members, uh, Najoki and uh, Wangechi included. Um, so, you know, thank you for asking, you know, the question because that is important to us is why, you know, we may have low representation in a specific area, um, you know, whether we're talking Kenya or Africa in general, which Africa is a very large continent, by the way. Um, yeah. So, you know, we have had moments surely in the past where our representation have been very, very low. Um, but right now, especially, we are seeing a huge uh, momentum of growth coming out of Africa, we've seen over um, 130% actually increase of new members coming in over the past two years alone. Um, so I think that also has to do with, you know, who is currently a member who is representing, you know, your areas, your cities, your countries, who's telling us, um, you know, you guys really need to take a look at this person or I really want to propose this person join. Um, that's actually a benefit of membership is you get to um, nominate other people for membership and you get to kind of grow your ecosystem of fellow uh, industry leaders and TV makers around you. Um, so that's actually a really huge um, part of it is sometimes we just don't have the person, you know, the eyes on the ground there to tell us, you know, this is who you need to look at. Otherwise, you know, it's kind of difficult for us who we are. Sometimes we do feel, you know, we're far away and we'll try to make the effort, you know, pre-COVID where we were able to go to trade shows and conferences and make sure we try to meet the right people. Um, but ultimately, you know, it's kind of difficult to do so. And, um, you know, that's why I'm really happy that we could be here today. And, um, you know, I'm very thankful that you have opened up this dialogue for us, Najoki, because it's members like you who are able to um, kind of introduce us to, um, you know, your crowd of people and make sure there is awareness you know, that's something that I've heard um, from multiple people today, you know, on this panel is that, you know, sometimes there's a lack of awareness that you can join. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think that is a huge thing as well. So, you know, some people see the brand and I think, you know, to the metaphors that we've been saying about, um, you know, we don't want to jump because the ground is too rocky. Sometimes I think we do feel a little bit intimidated that, you know, we might not be worthy enough to be a member. We not be, might not, um, our shows might not be great enough to, you know, be in the competition and that's absolutely um, false. Yes. And that's, you know, we are very welcoming and we want everybody mm -hmm. to come, you know, and try to be a part of our organization. Um, okay. So mm -hmm. yes, so that long answer short, uh, you know, I think, yeah. you know, it's things like that and, you know, sorry, go ahead. I will, I will come back to the issue of uh, what does it cost to be a member mm -hmm. and, they be what making people shy away but i don't want to get there yet let me first dwell in this topic a little bit more eva uh Obadia, who is the communications director for international emmy has actually said this she's there in the audience and she said um you can email us on awards dip at i emmys tv please check that it's already on Facebook. And what I'm going to do after this product, after this broadcast, I'm going to pick a lot of the key questions you have asked and the answers, and we're going to put them in little cards and post them on our Facebook weekly so you have no excuse. But there's a lot of information going on in the text on Facebook. Eva also says, 
we and we will add people who email us to our database so that they can receive our communications. I'm reading her words verbatim. I'm not making this up. So she's right there. She's reading all this. She's listening. Once again, what excuse do you have? Now, let me, I will come back to issue of fees and all that. I know New York is so far away. I think I came to New York in the last uh, physical gala. I know the last one was, um, was virtual because Kenya Airways had just started flying direct to New York and the flights were affordable. That's the truth of the matter, but we'll come back to that later. <laughs> Let me ask about, there's something that happens during those three days. It's not a one evening event. It's literally like three days event. I would like you to talk about it because there's some things I found fascinating and I wanted to crown myself into three jaw keys so as to attend the different workshops that were going on. I know you don't call them workshops. I forget what you call them. But whenever we have a festival, we have workshops and masterclasses going on. You, are, you also had that, might be using different phrases. And I'll mention two that I would like you to educate um, Africa on. Art programming and foreign content in US TV or something like that. The titles, I may not get them correctly, but Nathaniel, you're smiling, you know what I'm talking about. Go ahead. I, I, I do. Uh, and, and thank you for mentioning that, that festival. Uh, Yes, when we are presenting the, the awards, when we have our gala, uh, which is always on the Monday before uh, US Thanksgiving in November, uh, we do invite our nominees and members, jurors and their guests to attend the festival uh, over two days. Um, and during those two days, we really celebrate the nominations. Um, and again, as you were saying, you know, people were nominated, um, they're traveling to New York and they sometimes travel from the other side of the planet um, and so we don't want them to just come for just one night and in just a few minutes know if they actually won an Emmy or, or not. And um, we want to celebrate that nomination, which means really so much. Um, and I'll, I'll explain maybe a little more the judging process so people really understand the, the worth of the nomination. Uh, so during this, um, these two days, we organize a panel per category. Uh, the category that we present uh, during that event. Um, I'd like also to make just a little parenthesis on our categories because we have overall 16 categories. One of them is for, as Matt mentioned, for non-English US primetime programs. So that's for programs produced in the United States, but in majority not in English. Um, and then we had 15 categories to cover all of the genres that uh, you can find on television. So we have two categories for uh, journalism. So one for news, one for current affairs. We have three categories for kids programming, kids animation, kids factual and entertainment for everything that is nonfiction. And we have kids live action for everything that's fiction for, for the young audience. We have two special achievements for performers. So one uh, for actors and one for actresses. And then we have program categories, which is arts programming, comedy, documentary, drama series, non-scripted entertainment, uh, so that's variety shows or talk shows, can be also, you know, reality TV, docu-realities. Um, we have one for short form series, so uh, any series with episodes, you know, shorter than 20 minutes. We have telenovela, which is, of course, like a very, very specific genre uh, that you can find in, in Africa, um, and, um, and TV movie miniseries. So we really cover every type of programming. Um, during our event in November, we present the program's uh, nominees and, um, and the performance. And so for each one of these categories, we have a panel with uh, our four nominees. And that's what we were calling workshop. I guess it's really to make sure that we hear from, from nominees, right? Because people are so interested in hearing how you actually, you know, make uh, an Emmy uh, nominee um, or an Emmy nominated program. Uh, and especially, you know, from all these parts of the world, uh, we do recognize the entire world. And I, I think that this is something that's worth mentioning. When we present our four nominees, they all represent the best from their own region. So you have 
you know, let's say that we are judging telenovela or, or drama series, for example. When it comes to drama series, we have four nominees. We have the best drama series from Europe that's competing against the best from Latin America, that's competing against the best from the English language uh, countries, which is like UK, New Zealand, Australia, we English speaking Canada. And then we have the best from Asia, Africa, and the Middle East. So Africa right now is competing with Asia and the Middle East. And that's also a, a function of the number of programs submitted, uh, of course, as you were mentioning. Um, and you were talking about flooding and you referred it as my nightmare. That would be my dream. I would <laughs> love to see more African programs uh, come in. I mean, and, and when you said that you were so happy to see uh, a program com uh, coming from South Africa, I have to say that, you know, if we look at our map in terms of programs submitted into the competition, uh, in Africa or in Africa sub-Sahara, I have, you know, South Africa is definitely the place where we have the most programs that, uh, you, you know, that enter into our competition um, compared to, you know, so few from, you know, Kenya or, uh, and, and as you were, we were saying before, you know, when you submit, well, you know, sometimes you do win. You know? So it's uh, it's not like, oh, we enter, but we, we have no chance. Everybody has a chance. Um, it's, uh, and, and I know that also Michael uh, mentioned that, you know, how to lobby. And it's not about lobbying because we, we don't have a campaign, like a for your consideration campaign. It's really about what our jurors around the world are going to be touched by. And I, I think that, you know, and, and Jopi, you judge for the Academy and one day she's saying, uh, you know what's actually touching jurors. It's, you know, the human uh, uh, component is, you know, the story, you know, the, the, um, the, the, the genuine acting. It's all of these, you know, uh, little treasures um, yeah. that, that, that make the program and people from around the world are touched by, you know, by, by that truth. Um, but those stories, there's no, it's not about, you know, uh, how many people are anxious to, to, to read an yeah. ad or uh, it's really about the program itself. And yeah. that you know that genuine quality of the program. Yes. Yeah. Good. Excellent. And Wangeshi, let's first tell the audience the the international Emmys didn't come and say Zeb Tribe, can we pay you? You broadcast this. No. It's out of the conversation that I've had with Nathaniel and Matt. I said, please come and tell this to Africa. And it's probably sheer coincidence that I have also been a jury. At the Emmys for about, I think four years running, but I guess you've been there longer. How yeah. many Africa productions have you seen when you're judging? Oh, no. uh, <laughs> Nathaniel, no, I'm going to say my truth. Um, mm -hmm. I've actually haven't had a relationship with the Emmys for 10 years now running, going on to the 11th, and it's been a wonderful relationship. During this time, unfortunately, I have not come across many African submissions, and I'm usually um, one of the jurors for, as Nathaniel has said, for the Middle East and Africa, which is grouped together. And there is more of the Middle East than African content that um, is basically in that category. And I think this is the reason why we are having this discussion today, is to really find out or to in inform people about the Emmys and let them know that they can submit. I, I've just seen a ZP um, Okoth, one of um, you know one of the industry stakeholders here in Kenya, um, saying that they perceive the international Emmys to be of high budget Hollywood production movies, and I think it's important to demystify that, Nathaniel and Matt, because basically the Emmys are for any good content that is of high quality, that of course meets the is, has a good narrative and meets the criteria that has been set by the Emmys. So it's open to all, as Nathaniel has said. And I would be very excited, um, hoping that, um, you know, I will be able to judge this year. Nathaniel never lets me know in good time or tells me at all. So, um, and I'd, I would really like to see more African submissions because from what, like I said earlier, what I have been viewing recently is superb. It's fantastic. I think people have really come out of their shell. Um, they are gearing to go. There's a lot of good content, a lot of narratives that we didn't know about, you know, coming through um, in creative storytelling. And we need to really take advantage of this platform. However, I must say that even as we go through this, and I know, Jockey, you said that you will circle back to this, is um, just as very recent as today, 
Um, I was, like I said, Media Pro's assist, you know, by um, facilitating how people can submit their content. And one of the restrictions um, that the producer, the filmmaker, told me is, I really, really would love to submit my content to Emmys, but I don't have four hundred dollars. You know, so I think it's important um, to also see how then can we at least help? How can the Emmys help um, producers, and not only specific to Africa? but people who maybe may not necessarily have $400 to submit their film, which we know is really of great quality. Are there any maybe um, um, ways that the Emmys can be able to come in to, to support this? Maybe some waivers or, or a, a discounts that can be offered if maybe for early birds or something like that, because I do believe that we do have stories to tell and these stories really need international recognition and exposure, but there is a little bit of a barrier that is um, that is in between us being able to get our content across. Okay. So before New York answers that, I want first to go to Michael on the same topic. Obviously, to submit, it's one thing to tell people submit, but they have to part with a few dollars to submit. You're paying to submit. In Africa, competitions, we are so used to just, for it being free. So people submit anything and everything because it's in Africa. Well, I exaggerate because even in Africa, at times you find people with good productions not submitting to competitions. But Michael, the producers you know, and you know so many, you're one person who knows just about all producers in the continent. Do you think they can afford the $300, $400, $500 per program to submit to the Emmy? Okay, well, well, I, I know a lot of producers who can afford that. For example, um, sometimes after a production, you you, you spend a um, thousand dollars on champagne in the club. <laughs> you, you, you get into the club and pop a thousand dollars. I've had situation where, you know, um, myself and a couple of friends and celebrating a closed production and spent over three thousand dollars popping champagne in the club. So, if you if you know what you want, I do not see any reason why you would not spend uh, money in pursuing it because you will spend money on the production. I'm sure the budgets for every, for a lot of teams, which also includes uh, this section of the promotion, um, a lot of film festivals also charge for you to submit. And people still get their films on the film festival, even though it's not as expensive, you know, sometimes $100 or less. Mm. I believe that there are a lot of producers who have money to pursue their dreams. And if I think that I stand a chance to get an Emmy, why wouldn't I spend, you know, money to enter the, the, the film uh, with yes. hope? that I might stand a chance to be there. Even if I lose it, it's, you know, it's an effort made and one day just might pay off. So, you know, forget the fact that there are a lot of producers complaining, but there are also a lot of producers with big budgets to make projects. In Nigeria, there are a number of big budget productions. So if people spend, say, um, on, a, on a television, um, um, show, say they spend a million dollars, you know, to produce a television show. I see no reason why they wouldn't be able to put in 500 bucks, you know, to push the same show that spent a million dollars to, to, to shoot. So it's, um, well, different uh, strokes for different folks. You know, mm -hmm. some might see the need and some might say, well, you know, I don't have enough money. Let me put my money, you know, in other places. You know, but for, for me, I always say, uh, put your money where your mouth is. So you you get value for your money eventually. If I put um, money in pushing my film, it's the same thing I said when I also said lobbying. When you're lobbying, you spend money to lobby, you know, because sometimes you're lobbying uh, to get something and then you invite someone to a nice restaurant to lunch and by the end of the day, you're leaving uh you're paying the bill of two three hundred dollars you know for just one meeting and then you imagine a number of meetings you're going to have so if you find the need to push your brand to get that international appeal international recognition that you have been hoping that you would give your brand 
and eventually, you know, also connect with other people. Um, I don't think $500 would be too much, you know, to make that dream happen. Okay. Thank you so much, Michael, on that. Again, before I go back to our friends from New York, because I know you might be leaving us uh, in the next few minutes. Um, I think what you've said is quite important. It's the vision of the producer, because if they want to go international, even in pre-production, in budgeting, they would have slotted in that $500. Long before. I, I, I should just remind us, it's 400 so you already, you know, just got a $100 rebate right now. It's, for, yeah. it's $400. <laughs> I, I, I know, like, <laughs> you know, talking about 500 for like a few minutes. It's $400. I think okay. you want to scare everyone, and then when they see, they see 400 they go, oh, okay, that's just 400 that's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so, and I think um, you, you're right there, Nathaniel, in correcting us, but with what Michael is saying, it depends on the vision. Maybe there's somebody who just wants to be local, but anybody who wants to be international, or budget for that long before, you know, yeah. during your pre-prod, long before you start production. Michael, I want to ask you a question. On our poster, I actually put you down there as Ambassador Michael Parrish. Do you want to yeah. tell us about... You know, what country do you represent, you know, well? <laughs> okay, so so um, I'm special envoy to the International Society of Diplomats. Uh, mm -hmm. You can see, so I'm special envoy. Mm -hmm. And um, so I represent the International Society of Diplomats in uh, um, promoting uh, diplomatic issues in West Africa. Okay. So can you use that position in encouraging more people to submit their productions to international platforms? Yeah, we use we use the my position at the African Film Consortium to, to convince more people <laughs> to submit <laughs> the on the spot. Yeah. yeah, so uh, Excellent. the other the other one is um would use it to promote um and lobby for cultural diplomacy. We can, yeah, so uh, there's a lot we can always do. Cultural diplomacy is key uh, to growing the African film industry. And um, I believe that uh, with what you've started and, you know, with this conversation, I, I, I want to hope we can have it, you know, at least from time to time and get more, you know, more people to uh, engage in the conversation um, yes. and more people to listen up. Um, it's going to benefit a lot of people on the continent. Um, I, I know that after this broadcast um, has gone viral, uh, more people would ask, have a lot of questions uh, to yeah. ask. And okay. um, it's also important that you ask the big question, how do we get um, more Africans, you know, on, on board membership, the international Emirates? Um, a lot of very uh, uh, important uh, stakeholders would be interested uh, to know how they can get on board. And uh, I'm sure Wangeshi and Jockey can uh, nominate more people. And I, I believe that uh, Matt and Nathaniel can uh, lobby to ensure that those people get on board uh, yes. the platform. Okay. Thank you so much. When you talk about nominating or um, proposing people to be members of the International Emmy, I gave myself a target and everybody I proposed, they've sailed through. So it's not difficult. That I have bear witness. <laughs> and this is here. Sure you're nice to the jokey and when get you. Know your way in. <laughs> yes, yes. No. I, 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 I got yeah. upset when I realized we're not Kenyans and I made it my personal mission. I think now we are nearly 10 and I have another target of 20 before the end of this year from anywhere across Africa. But that's a conversation for another day. Michael, thank you so much. We know you might be leaving early. Feel free to drop off anytime, but thank you, thank you so much. So let me continue with the debate. I don't know whether my panelists, you're reading what's coming up on Facebook. You know, in Africa, we always negotiate. You, when you go to the market, you don't buy the first price you're given. That is crazy. That is obscene. That is immoral. You've got to negotiate. So they're saying, do, 
do they even know about the exchange rate? Oh, 40,000 Kenyan shillings is a lot of money. And finally, finally somebody say, Mokami, Daina, why can't we have Emmy Africa to cater for the African continent? Isn't it possible? Nathaniel, over to you. I didn't ask. They asked. <laughs> I, I would say producers should, you know, turn us into Emmy Africa by submitting their shows. By submitting so many of their shows that it's it's going to become, you know, like uh, uh, Africa all the way. Um, but that's that's the that, that's the path to be nominated and to to winning an Emmy is to again is to present the show. That's you know that that's the idea. If we don't see the show in, well, we cannot show it to our jurors and they cannot recognize it's uh, you know the the, um, the the program or their the, the performers. So it really starts by you know being being present and and submitting the show. Yeah, actually, that's a very good point, Nathaniel. If we flood you, swamp you, drown you with content from Africa, and we keep winning and winning, all the other countries will say, why is it always Africa? Why is it always Africa? Then we can say, OK, fine, we'll have our own competition, and then you can do up yours. <laughs> so Africa, there is your challenge. Africa, there is your challenge. And also, do we want, remember again, I keep saying I'm a proud African, so I keep going to African sayings. There's always that phrase about being the woman in a girl's world or the man in a boy's world. What do I mean by this? Does it mean if we are best in Africa is comparative to best international? Why don't we want to be best international just happens to be from Africa? Why do we have to just keep to our continent? How close up do we want to be so that we can say mine was the best this year and we tap our shoulders, but how do we compare to the world? I feel different producers will have different visions and different objectives, and that is okay. Not every producer want to try and get to New York being nominated, go and get an Emmy. Some would say, no, let me make my simple production and make a lot of money within my country. And sure enough, because the trophy is not money, it's just prestige. But somebody else would rather just sell and push the content locally and they make cash into the bank. That is also okay. Some producers want to say, Africa, I am here. Others will be like, I don't care about that. Let me make my money at home. That's still okay. You can't have it both ways, Africa. Now, Nathaniel, uh, Matt, Matt, what does it take for one to be a member of the international Emmy? Uh, sure. So actually, similar to you know what Nathaniel's been saying about the Emmy's competition and our whole conversation here, um, you know, just the first step is to submit your application, right? Uh, you know, that's kind of been our consistent theme here is that, you know, that's the first step is to submit yourself. Um, and that's, again, just to repeat, you know, we are open. We're an open organization. We really want to welcome everybody and everybody is welcome. Um, so, you know, Eva has been great in sending links in the comments. So if you want to um, go take a look at the application for membership, there's a link there as well. And she might even um, put it back there as well. Um, in terms of eligibility to join, um, we do require that you be employed at an executive level or upper management position for a minimum of two years in a company um, or an organization that is directly engaged or providing services to the television industry. Um, and I believe something, uh, Najoki, I want to ask you about is, you know, one of your, um, I guess, obstacles when you were trying to become a member, there was um, a requirement for an endorsement from a current yeah. member. So that is something that we still have on the application. Um, so members endorse other members, members nominate other members. Um, and that really is to you know, show us and inform us that you know, this person that's applying is you know, the real deal. Our membership is still very you know, tight knit. It's 600 you know, members and growing. And we wanna make sure when you uh, become a member, and Njoki mentioned the price as well, it's $1,000 um, a year for membership. We want to make sure you're getting the most, you know, bang for your buck. So we try to make sure our membership is comprised really of, you know, the great industry leaders um, and people representing your countries. Um, so, you know, we do ask that you put, 
uh, endorsement from a current member, but if you don't, that's still okay. We will still accept your application and we encourage you to still submit and we will um, definitely still review your application. And we have a committee um, that oversees and looks over the application and um, you know, that we'll definitely still look and see if you are, you know, a great potential member and we might reach out to you and ask you a few questions as well. But, you know, it really is that easy of just submitting, just like the competition. Sure. So, Matt, what you're saying is that the Academy, the International Academy of Television uh, Sciences and Arts. Sorry, it's a mouthful. Because now we are talking about two things. Submitting your content for the Emmys competition, so you get the trophy, the Emmy. And we're also talking about being a member of the Academy. And when you're a member, you get to attend the gala, you get to attend all those workshops that go on. And like, for example, now during, um, during COVID, you're, you're, you're doing a lot of programs for us. We go virtually, we meet other members, we discuss. So there are lots of benefits for sure. And I know when I came for the gala in New York, seeing all that those people from Brazil and Argentina and their productions, which by the way, I was going gaga. I was literally going gaga. But being in the same room, I was hoping it was rubbing onto me, yeah? So there's also that thing of you might not win, but mingling in there. I learned a lot about ad programming. I learned about foreign content in US television. So there are things I picked from there. So I might not come home with a trophy, but I learned a lot and the networks. Matt also, several times I've contacted you and I've told you, I want to know, please put me in touch with somebody who's an expert on telenovela. You only do an email and before I know it, you know? So what am I saying? It's also a club. There are rules to this club. There is a discipline to this club. That's why you have to apply, be vetted according to certain conditions, and be accepted. So it's normal. Sports clubs do that all the time. Other clubs do that. It's like a school. You want to attend a certain school, you have to answer three, four questions as well. So there is that. And Africa, let me tell you, it's not discriminative. When I went there, I didn't even have somebody to endorse me, what we normally call propose. And I just told Matt, I'm looking for somebody to propose me. And before you know it, it was done. Wangeshi is lucky because I approached her and I told her, please join. But Wangeshi, talk a little bit to Africa. Tell Africa something about becoming members from your own personal experience. Um, well, I mean, I have enjoyed every every minute of it. Um, like everyone has said, as Matt has said, um, and you have also alluded that it is a club. It's a family, really, um, when you become a member of the Academy. And what that does is it provides you with a really good leverage to network with like-minded people and professionals from different parts of the world because, you know, um, everybody comes, you know, it's an international platform. And um, it really exposes you to a lot of opportunities um, that you can get into. I can tell you for a fact, um, even at Media Pros Africa, um, the resource center that I manage, a lot of networks and a lot of connections and a lot of opportunities have come through members that I, I have interacted with at the Academy. So um, there are definitely very strong, very key benefits that come to being associated with the Emmys and even more so to becoming a member. Unfortunately, unlike you, Jockey, I really haven't had the opportunity to attend the gala, but I'm hoping all things, um, if things go well this year and if um, it will still be on, I would very, very much like to attend and um, represent uh, you know, Kenya, represent Africa, because I think um, just also being there on the ground exposes you to a lot more, as you have said, it's a three-day event. It's not just a one-day event. So would i ask africans to really just put their heart into it and um, join the academy absolutely because you will really reap the benefits there's a lot of value that comes into being um part of this academy and matt has been very very helpful he's a very easily accessible and any member from his team if you want anything from them they are really resourceful and they're very quick to you know respond to your emails or your questions and guide you through whatever it is that you need so um 
I'm, I'm a very happy member. So thank you very much, Emmys, for, for having me. And I will endorse more people and hope to nominate more people. <laughs> and, and, and we're we're the lucky ones for having you both. So thank you so much. It's yeah, yeah. Our honor. And, and, and let me clarify to our audience: we were not paid to do this, <laughs> and we're doing it for Africa because we love Africa. That's why we brought the Academy to you. We just love yeah. Africa. I wish one guessy I can do that. I, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. It's easy, Doc. You just say it. There you go. You have to teach me. Now, we are running <laughs> out of time. As usual, this hour goes very fast. Please, our audience, our listeners there, post your last questions. I want to ask you one thing. If you have a question, post it now. Two, also, type in the country you are listening from. We want to know who's been out there. Just the country is good enough. Meanwhile, back to our team from the Academy. I have one last question for you. This is even motivated by Waringa's question. What might be happening? Okay, quote. What might be happening is that, oops, 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 I'm losing it, sorry. What might, might be happening is that there isn't sufficient awareness. People do not know that they can actually submit content and take it beyond their borders. When people begin to get this information, I believe they'll mobilize and organize themselves to participate fully. The future is bright, end of quote. Thank you so much, Waringa, well put. So now I have a question for you. People from the academy, people from New York, it's still early in the morning, so you have the energy to answer this. In Kenya and in many other African countries, we have the Oscar committee. They guide us. What are the requirements? We go to them. I know it's not all the countries have got it. So in Africa, what any presence do we have to go and ask our questions? Us. That's us. <laughs> but you're in New York. You're in New York. <laughs> <laughs> you're not here. Well, we, no, but we're happy to hear from you. You can, you know, you can email us, you can call. Um, really, that, that's that's what we do. Again, our mandate is to recognize, you know, the, the the excellence in television from around the world. And so we want to see we want to see your shows. We want to help you, you know, submit if you have a trouble with uh, with our website or with uploading videos or anything. We, we're here for you. So um, okay. so please never hesitate. You know, you, you know. I think that Eva shared that multiple times. Thank you so much. The uh, email address that, that you can uh, you know uh, email your questions to. And we do our best to 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 reply as as quickly as possible to to make sure that you know you're on the right path and, and your program is uh, is submitted. One one more thing that I'd like to to add is uh, don't don't judge yourself too harsh. You know you're going to be your programs are going to be judged by jurors from around the world, yes. and uh, you don't know uh, what they're going to be interested in. Uh, what's extremely important is that they actually see your shows. They see what you're doing. Um, and uh, and as I remind many people, you know, the individual is always the worst juror of their own uh, programs. Uh, and, and so many times I, I heard people were nominated that said, I almost didn't submit it because I didn't think that I would, you know, fare well or that, you know, it, it would get there. Um, and oh, someone just pushed me to do it. So it's like, okay, what the hell? But, uh, you know, if they did not submit because they thought that, you know, maybe it was not... Uh, uh, what the Academy was looking for, you know, which is a completely preconceived idea, um, yeah. they would have not been nominated. And it's such a shame when you think yeah. that your program could actually be nominated and sometimes win an, uh, an award. So, uh, so don't, you know, don't be the the, the juror of your own program. Just you know, you're doing them, you love them, and you should mm -hmm. show them to the world. Okay. Yeah. And I just want to add one thing, actually, um, on the topic of you know awareness and also kind of, you know, us bringing more of the Emmys, I guess, to Africa, one of the um, unique benefits of being a member of the Academy is that you get to host a semi-final round of judging, which is the second round of our judging, which I believe both of you have had the pleasure of um, being a juror for. So as a member, you are able to put on a judging event in your home country. Um, you're able to brand with the Academy and use the Emmy brand. And that kind of really is sort of bringing the Emmy, you know, to your country. Um, yeah. You could build, you know, media around that. You could build brand awareness for your, you know, company as well. And that really is an opportunity for us to really, you know, 
put our foot inside your, you know, your home and say, you know, we're here and you're also welcome. And, you know, we encourage you to invite, you know, jurors, um, you know, who are, you know, who you consider to be, you know, top um, people who would be great for the competition um, to invite them to come and check out really what we do and also give them inspiration if they didn't already know it to, you know, to be a juror, to enter their programs or, you know, to become a member themselves and, you know, host, you know, event in the future. Um, you know, right now it's complicated because of the pandemic, um, but all of our judging events have been online um, virtually. So, you know, some places where it is safe to do it, we might still try to explore options for that. But right now, um, you know, we still are hosting those events all around the world, um, hosted by our members all around the world and still inviting people to come in and have the opportunity to not only um, be a juror in the competition and vote on, you know, what gets nominated, but to also learn about the Academy. And I think that's something um, really special and worth noting as well. Yes, the awareness is key for sure. And of course, if, you know, only producers, networks, distributors can submit the program, I would also, you know, encourage the people in the audience who love the show to actually, you know, reach out to their networks, reach out to those producers saying like, I love your show. I hope that you submitted for an Emmy. Um, and, you know, and, and maybe that way these networks we didn't maybe think about submitting, just think, oh, wait, you know, maybe we should. And, and that's, that's how it starts. So. Yes. Thank you so much, Nathaniel, on that, because I think Eva, your communications director earlier on in the show, posted something like, if you know of a program that you really like, they can email you with the name of the producer and the contact, and then you can tell them, hey, people are saying you, you submit. Because at times, maybe we don't know them personally, but we've seen beautiful content. But then I would ask myself, why isn't the producer submitting it anyway, you know? So I, I think you've, you've definitely given us so much awareness. And I think these conversations are only beginning, I would say so. What I love about the people listening to us there, there's a lot of, there are lots of Africans in diaspora I see Waringa from Greece, Ibie Isoken from Canada, Patience from Patience Okuofu, sorry if I pronounce your name wrong, from USA. So we are not just talking to Africa residents, we are also talking a lot to Africans in diaspora. And that's what I love about Zeb Tribe, our broadcast. We tend to reach Africa of all walks of life across the continent. The other thing I'd like to tell our audience is that is there still a question that you want to ask or you've missed the response maybe because you came in later, you're having network issues, you can also post the question on our Facebook, Zap Tribe TV. We'll pick it up from there and we will get a response from, we're not going to answer it ourselves, no. It's going to be answered by the by the academy, yeah? Or somebody else says he's also there from Texas. Wow, that's Sandra from Texas. So even the many questions you have asked, we are going to put them in a card where we'll get the Emmys, the, the academy, to give us a concise, complete response. And we'll keep posting so you keep reading. We're giving you this information for free. It's going to be permanently there in the net. You have only yourself to blame if you do not take advantage. Now, it's actually six, going to 6.15. We've done an extra 15 minutes. We should ideally stop at 6 o'clock Kenya time on time when Jiro is seeing you from Chicago, Illinois. Now, I'm going to go around and ask for final word. This time, I reverse the order. I'll start with you, Angeshi. Then I'll go to Matt. Then finally, Nathaniel, you'll be concluding this broadcast for us. One guess. Yeah. Great. Um, I mean, gosh, I, I thought we were just getting started. You know, the conversation is just really getting interesting. Um, but um, I think um, the questions that have been asked here this evening or morning um, for people in New York are very pertinent. Um, and um, I, I, I believe that Nathaniel and Mark have. Um, Wangeshi, have I lost you? Um, I, I'm back. Yes, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. okay. okay. start again. Um, start again. Okay, well, 
basically just in brief i'm just saying i think the discussion has gone very well um i believe that there has been more information that has been shared that and um, people are more aware about the Emmys now than they were before. I, I also have learned a little bit, one or two things that I maybe did not know about um, before this conversation started. So I think that's a good place to start. And what um, Waringa and, and the others have mentioned with regards to awareness, it's very important. And that's why at Media Post, like you said, um, we try and facilitate you know, content creators and, and, and producers to see how then they can be able to submit their content to the Emmys. Because yes, it's true that um, not everybody has access to this information, or maybe it's not really top of mind as to how they can be able to engage you know, with the Emmys. So it's important that at least um, there are people on the ground and, um, and we are very happy to do that um, and facilitate that process. So I think somebody had also, Patricia had also asked that question that if they would like to talk to us um, as Wageshi was, uh, as media pros, yes, we are very much open to having that discussion because for us, our aim really is to have more African content out there exposed to the international market and receiving the recognition that it deserves because we know that we have great productions that definitely need to be acknowledged. Maybe just before I round up, Joki, just one of the other things that we were talking about, and Mikhail mentioned this, that um, when it comes to producers, including, um, you know, the submission fee into their budget. I completely agree. And Nathaniel also pointed this out. It's a very important. So that bit of um, uh, uh, definitely producers need to think about. But I think we also need to be cognizant of the fact that um, we do not produce budgets with millions of cash. I think it's important to also have that understanding from a producer's background that actually most of the content is produced maybe on a shoestring budget and a lot of things really are out of goodwill. So when producers are saying, we really want to make quality um, content and they go out and they do that, they have really put their best all. Some maybe have even sold their mother in the process just for them to be able to get their content out there. So I think it's important really just to also just think about that. Even the payment could be staggered. Um, I'm not saying that um, we, they, can't, they should not definitely pay for this, but it's important to just have that at the back of the mind that um, it would be good to just have that consideration at the end um, at the end is this is to you nathaniel and matt because um we really do want to submit but we also just need to be given that opportunity just a little bit of a, some leeway um for us to be able to get our content out there and also just driving the message also just here back at home i think also um like the government should also come and support our producers, our content providers, if they are not in a position to raise that 400 shillings, can they also maybe get some support? Because we also need to build and cultivate that here right from home. If our government can support Kenyan producers or Nigerian producers or South Africa or from Mali or wherever to be able to get exposure, you see to, that recognition does not go to the producer alone. It goes to the entire nation. So for me is also, let's also support our own um, if we're in a position where we can be able to do that. So this is really now just looking inward to see how we can all be able to help one another. I think those, that's what I wanted to say. Very salient points, very salient points, Wangeshi. Matt, talk to us, your final words. Put a little focus on membership. Sure, um, and of course, I mean, I just wanna thank you, you know, for opening up this dialogue again. And, you know, the conversation I feel like is just starting and opening up, but you know, Najoki, you and I have been having these conversations for, you know, a couple months now. So I'm glad we are finally able to kind of um, figure out and learn from one another kind of what, you know, what areas we might be lacking on our end, especially. So it's very great to hear all the questions that you have, some of the questions from the audiences, because we definitely do take in that feedback and look, you know, forward how we could um, better present ourselves in awareness. Um, I will say on membership, again, you know, it is welcome to everybody to come check out and apply um, within certain eligibility requirements, but, you know, let us look at your application at least, you know, give yourself a shot. Um, we will do that. Um, we do elect members four times throughout the year. Uh, so our next election is actually coming up next month. Um, March 18th is our board meeting. So if you want to um, become a member so that you could join um, that board meeting, which is like a virtual um, members opportunity for members to meet one another. We also have uh, guest speakers from the industry. 
Um, so that's coming up in March, um, and then we do it again in June, and we elect people again in September and November. So there are opportunities throughout the year. So if you feel like right now is not the right time for you to join, or you still have questions, I'm more than happy to have a conversation with you, get on a Zoom with you, uh, you know, get on the phone with you, WhatsApp, whatever. We're here, um, and then happy to you know figure out what it is that you would want to get out of membership. We um, do have a bunch of unique benefits. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of different opportunities and different ways that you could leverage, I think, your membership for your personal brand and your business overall. Um, and just thank you again, Najobi, for everything. Thank you so much. Nathaniel, your very last word. Well, first of all, uh, as Matt was saying, Joki, thank you so much for, for making this happen. It was great to have this opportunity to have this conversation. Um, and uh, it was great to have this conversation also and share it with uh, Wangeshi and, and Michael. Um, and uh, and I, want, I want also to thank everybody who, who tuned in, actually, who followed that, uh, that conversation and showed their interest in, you know, how to, you know, make their program more international and, and have uh, their place on that, on that map. Um, and also, of course, to, to everyone who's going to watch it later. Uh, but really look for for answers. Um, I, I hope that we really made it clear that it's there's an Emmy in in, in Africa's future uh, again. Uh, there's uh, you know it, we we try as much as possible to make the the process extremely easy and simple. But we're here to assist. If there's any uh, you know at, at any point of the process, if there is any question, we want to make sure that everybody understands that we we're here to answer their questions and you know. And, and help them submit their programs because we, we do really want to see, uh, you know, the programs that are made in, the, in Africa, so. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nathaniel. To our audience, the current ones who are live with us and those who watch this on YouTube later on in about 48 hours or so, the topic today was the International Academy of Television, Arts and Sciences and the International Emmy Awards. Emmys and Africa, what is our place? I think what we have seen is that the place is there, but are we walking in? What's holding us? Is it financial issue? Is it awareness issue? Is it the prioritization? Or is it waiting for things to be made easier for us? Which category do you fall in? If it's awareness, we have given you loads of awareness. If it's the cost, then we are asking you, reflect, where are your priorities? And it's okay if it's, you say, this year I cannot submit, I don't have the $400. So it's up to you to decide what sort of producer you want to be, how far you want your content to travel. And also awareness, we've given you this broadcast. We are going to have it out there in the web for you to review and watch more and learn more. And we've also given you a lot of contacts, email contacts, website, about membership, about awards, about the activities of the International Emmy. Now the job is for you. What will you do with all this information? We at Zep Tribe TV, what we do, what we started when the COVID started, is to bring filmmakers from across the world and bring them to Africa in our living rooms, on our phones. Even as you travel in public transport, you can listen to us. You don't have to go to New York to know about the international Emmys. We brought them right here in your living room at your desk. The job is up to you now. So Africa, do we have Emmys? Do we have, is there a place for Africa? The question is, Africa, do you want to take your place in the Emmys? With that, I thank you all and remind you, this is the last week of submissions. No extensions, please. Don't ask for an extension. Go out there and submit. You have six days to submit to the international Emmys. With that, maybe I'll ask all our panelists, let's say goodbye to everybody. And thank you so much. Thank you, Nathaniel. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, thank you Angashi. Thank you. Thank and you. Waheri, as we say in East Africa. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. Cheers. Bye. Bye.